So I've just been sent a PS2000 power station by iTech World and a 300 watt solar panel. And I'm gonna review them straight out of the box and also give you an idea of what to look for when you're getting these things and give you some of the experience I've had with using these things out in the bush. Cause I generally make feature films and YouTube videos where I'm on a boat, full drive, dugout canoe in the Great Barrier Reef and I'm always trying to charge my camera equipment. I'm not trying to power a 1200 watt saw or a belt sander. I'm just using this to describe how much power there is and how much output there's available. But uh, for me, I primarily want to be able to power my adventures. So I'm just going to show you around uh, what I think of this new piece of equipment. Whilst this is a sponsored video, there is a quick backstory to this. So I've been offered similar stuff from other companies and because I really want this equipment, when I looked in at the specs, I wasn't happy with the specs. The other ones were heavier and took up more volume. And I really need these things out in the bush where I need light, lightness and uh, compactness for the same amount of power. So I actually went to iTech World because I use their other product, the iTech 300. I've been using that for the last few years and it's been really good. And I just said, hey, I've had this other offer, but I'd rather represent your stuff. Uh, how about you send me some free stuff? And they said, great, yeah, thank you. So I actually turned down cash on the other one. I'm not getting cash for this one. And that goes to show how much I want this piece of equipment because it's better. So it comes in a box, double cardboard box, and it's foam wrapped. It's 22 kilos, right? Which is, you know, it's, it's heavy. You're not gonna hike with this, but you can still see I'm lifting it up on an awkward angle. You can, you know, 22 kilos, I can easily pick it up by one of these handles, but it's certainly easy enough to get in and out of the car. No worries at all. When it, it comes to only really with three things, this bag and the three cables here. So this is an AC charging cable just to plug into the 240 volt power point, the solar charging cable, and also plug this into your four wheel drive to charge from the four wheel drive, literally straight into a cigarette socket. It does have on the side here uh, covers for various ports and I've just removed the covers because they're easy to remove. You just slide them, you just bend them and click it straight back in. But I just prefer the convenience of not having extra covers. So I've, I've taken them off. So I should just talk about what you would use this for. I reckon the most people would use this for camping, like four wheel drive camping, boating trips, where they're going away for a weekend or more and they just want continuous power for things like coffee machines, camping lights, small heaters, a whole range of th different things in camp. It's big enough that you can kind of not, you know, meter out the battery usage as you go and worry about running out for a short weekend. If you wanted to then keep going, then you would take a solar panel and, and charge it as you go. That's the kind of thing I think most people would want it for. Whereas for me, I'm not so into the luxuries of camping. I like to kind of keep my camping fairly simple. So I can, um, once you start getting soft, it's easy to stay soft. But certainly I go camping with my wife and she prefers to be comfortable. So it's the kind of thing where if I, if I take something like this, she's more likely to come if I'm able to provide those extra things. And, and like coffee machine is the kind of thing that you can definitely help sell a camping trip to your wife. Also the heater, particularly if we're going camping in winter with a heater, she might just come. <laughs> right, so I'm gonna show you around this thing. So on this side here, we have the AC charging port, which I'll cover shortly. And this is where you plug in the solar panels. There's an overload protection switch there where if you, if you ask too much of it, rather than blowing up, it'll turn itself off. Uh, and you can just, once you've unplugged everything, click this button and it'll click back online. On the front here, we have the main interface, press the um, power button to turn it on. So we've basically got discharge remaining. Obviously the more things you have plugged in, the less hours remaining there'll be. Battery percentage, that's how much energy is in the battery still. The input power or input wattage and output wattage. And as you press a bunch of these buttons, you'll see a whole bunch of other small little um, lights come up on the bottom here. So this is the DC panel. So to get power from this, press DC and you'll see that some little panel lights come up, come up here. And we have a standard 12 volt cigarette lighter plug that you'd have in a four wheel drive. This is a XT60 port and two 12 volt 3 amp DC ports. If you're not using these, 
turn it off because they do waste a bit of power if you've got these things energized and you're not using them. In the USB panel here, we've got four standard USB-A sockets. All well, these ones are standard and these ones are the extra QC3 that just give you a little bit more wattage. And then USB-C as well, two of those. Once again, turn them on and turn them off. That is something you do need to remember. You don't just, if you just plug this in, thinking that it's charging your phone battery, you run away and you didn't turn this on, you might come back and go, oh man, it hasn't charged up. So remember that. Uh, over here, there's a light. Press it once, light comes on. Different frequency of flashing. And it just turns off. And then the power button, obviously just to turn off that screen. And on the far side, we have three AC power points, which you can select on and off by that as well. You can see there's vents here, which allow airflow to come on. If the thing starts getting too hot, it'll turn these fans on. And if it overheats too much, it'll actually turn itself off. And on the back side, there's really not nothing that much. Uh, top side, just the handles. I like this large flat space on the top. And I can imagine myself just like plugging most of my camera gear and drones and stuff on this. I might even make a little box that, that sits on top uh, and some other thing. I, what I would actually like to do is make a waterproof box that it goes in that I can then lift it out when I get to the location and then use that box as shade and rain cover for the whole thing whilst I'm charging stuff. And then I'll just put it all back in again. Still figuring out the best way to do that. So let's talk about the capacity of this thing. It's 2000 watts. That's how much power is inside it. So watts is amps times volts. You don't need to know too much about that stuff. It becomes handy if you can understand how the equations work because you can easily assess how many things you can charge. But basically, uh, it will release 2000 watts of power from it. And the amount of capacity it has is also 2000 watts, which means for one hour, it will continuously release 2000 watts. It just happens to be that the capacity of this thing is 2000 watts and it can also release 2000 watts. They're, they're two separate figures. To give you an idea how much power that is, this is my standard full drive battery. And for these batteries, if you go below half of the charge in this battery, over time it will destroy the battery. But the PS2000 has three and a half times the usable power because you can exhaust a lithium battery all the way to zero and it doesn't affect it. When you want to run a drill, if you want to know if you can run a power appliance off it, here it says this is 710 watts, so that's less than 2000 watts. So yes, I can do this drill. So outside, when I started this video, I had a 800 watt appliance and a 1200 watt appliance, so adding together to 2000 and I could run them at the same time. There's not many appliances that need more than 2000 watts. Probably air conditioning is the only one I can think of off the top of my head, maybe an arc welder. Space is at a premium whenever you're in a four wheel drive or caravan whatever so the most important things that you need to look at when you're researching the right power station for you is once you decide how much power you need so in this case we've got 2000 watt hours the next two most important things are how big is it so look at the dimensions and how much does it weigh and the reason I wanted this one over all of the other ones that I could find on the market was that it was considerably lighter by about 10 20 percent and considerably smaller, between 20 and 50% smaller. So I'm gonna charge this thing. This is a standard uh, power point. The manual actually recommends not going via power boards and extension cables. So I'm just gonna do this for a short amount of time. I'll plug it in and basically you can see that it's now charging. And what's really cool is that it shows you how long left it's got till it completes charging and it shows how much how many watts are going into it so soon it'll stabilize at its maximum power because it's just ramping up and it stabilizes around 1100 watts which is a huge amount of power going in and that's why you're not supposed to have it plugged in via extension leads because they can actually start getting hot so if this is going in at 1100 watts and the capacity of this thing is 2000 watts it's going to take less than two hours to charge and you can see now it's showing two hours, now it's gone in minutes. So, you know, basically that's an hour and 40 minutes, which is about right. So that's pretty cool. So two hours to charge this entire thing is really quite amazing. Uh, I'll unplug that. And I'm just gonna run an appliance quickly off it. 
So I've just grabbed a soldering iron and you'll see now it's a, it says 40 watts on the soldering iron and you can see it's pulling 30 watts so there's a little bit of uh, leeway here and there probably from the device that's charging actually. So what's it's really cool being able to track how much power is going in and how much power is going out. That'll make a little bit more sense when we get outside and I try the 300 watt solar panels which we might as well go and do now. All right, so this is the 300 watt solar panel with Raptor skin. I'll just show you what's in this pocket. I do like that it's got a pocket on top here. It's got a really thick uh, extension cable, a PMW solar controller, which you don't need to use for this setup. You would only use this if you were trying to charge your car battery via the panel, okay? Um, so if you're doing that, it's also got uh, these leads to go up your battery terminals in your under the bonnet of your car and an instruction manual so to set it up it's not rocket science point it straight into the sun which is there all right and what i love is that it's got these supports that come out quite easily from the back the uh last panel that i had like this didn't have that and i was on some beaches and sand spits in the middle of nowhere with nothing to prop it up with I was running around trying to use driftwood and a whole bunch of things as well. So it is nice to be able to just do that so quickly. So this is the cable that came with the power station. Now you would normally have the power station out of the sun, but I'm just going to put it in here because it's nice and close and I want to show you something. So I'm plugging in there. I just want you to notice something here. It's hard for me to see, but I'm out here in the sun for a reason. The wattage that we're getting there is 257. Okay, remember that. Now I'm gonna use the extension cable and bring it back here into the garage where we can see things a lot easier. This is why you want an extension cable. So you can have yourself and the battery and do whatever you do out of the sun and let the solar panels be the only thing in the sun that's another reason i don't like having solar panels on the roof of the car because i don't want to park the car in the sun now i'll plug it in so the only thing i've done now is add in the cable and it's a nice generous thick cable but it's to show you that you still lose power through any cable which is why you want to minimize how many cables are between you and the blanket i'm just trying to compare the, having the cable in there, but it's just gone partly cloudy. So you can see it's already making it's a lot less power right now. That is just due to the clouds. And that's why you want to have bigger panels than you think you need, because a lot of the time it's just cloudy. Um, before the clouds were thicker and I was only getting like less than 100 watts. So you just, when you charge and there's good sun, you want to make the most of it. Don't expect that you're going to have sun all day. And also, a lot of the time, when you're in a, if you're camping, you don't want to leave your nice expensive solar panels and power banks out because someone might steal them. And that's what happened to me. They, they, someone stole my panel when I was in Saudi Arabia just before I did an expedition. So often you're only going to be setting up or back at camp for three hours. That's, you need to maximize the amount of sun that you got then. All right, now I've got mostly full sun again, and it's showing 244 input. I actually checked it last time in really good sun before and uh, I was losing basically five watts just through the thickness of the cable. So here we are basically getting 250 watts, let's just round it to 250 and you can see that it's telling us really handily that there's six hours left to charge uh, at this charging rate. Obviously that's going to fluctuate with how much energy is going in but you can basically monitor you know if energy going in equals energy going out then your battery status is going to stay the same and what's really important what i really like about being able to monitor this so easily without having to plug it into a bluetooth phone app or anything like that is you can see if there's anything wrong with your panels if that figure is lower than you expect you can start the troubleshoot so let's just say that figure was low you could go over your panels there and you could sort of cover them up one by one to see if one of your panels wasn't working so if you covered up each panel and I'll actually do that now just to show you what I mean you can see uh, that it's dropped but it's still working so I've lost about 50 watts from that panel and that's about right because each if each one is providing 50 watts then the five panels will make about 250 watts 
Another great thing about these panels is on, on other solar setups, if you shade just one panel, or even half of one panel, it'll kill 90% of power to all the other panels. That's if they're linked up in series. These are linked up in parallel, and so you don't have the problem. So basically, this is a good solar panel setup because partial shade on one panel won't kill the whole setup. So you might be wondering why a 300 watt solar panel doesn't put out exactly 300 watts. That's because that's the ideal case and generally, realistically, you only ever get about 20% less than what the name of the solar panel is. So you only really expect about 240, 250 from a 300 watt panel. That's because the sun is rarely directly overhead. If it's coming through on an angle, it's got to go through more um, contaminants in the atmosphere. There might be dirt on the surface of the panel. There's wear and tear over time. There's all of the losses in the system through all the cables and connections and all that kind of thing. So, so keep that in mind for whatever panel you buy. Just subtract about 20%. And that's even if you have got it pointing directly into the sun. All right, let's start charging this thing from the car. Notice how I've got it just chucked on the side there, just temporarily. That's the thing about lithiums. They don't need to be stored upright like a standard like full drive car battery used to be. So that's another great thing about lithiums. Now I've just plugged one end into the cigarette lighter socket and this one is going in, there we go. Made a nice beeping sound. And it's inputting 17 watts, which is pretty slow. I could probably get considerably more if I went via the battery and just plugged it straight off the battery terminals. Plugging it in by supplied cables and there we go. That's more like you'd expect, close to 100 watts of input. Here's a mass question for you. 100 watts, how long is it going to take to charge a 2000 watt hour battery? 2000 divided by 100. 20 hours, 20 hours. So you'd have to do drive halfway across Australia to charge this thing up. So it's not the fastest option, but if, if you're just going driving somewhere anyway, you may as well trickle charge it. That's why you really want solar panels to quickly charge or make use of the two hour charging by just plugging in to an AC port when you get home. When I do expeditions in the four wheel drive and then I'm editing for days afterwards, I'll just be pop up my rooftop tent throw this out wherever the sun is because the car can be parked in the shade. Uh, that's, that's what I love about portable solar panels. And away I go just tapping on my laptop the whole time. And, and my laptop using Premiere Pro and those um, high grade editing softwares use a lot of power. Same with my drone batteries. I can just go unlimited with my drone battery use. And with a lot of my expeditions, I'm just rationing power, spending so much time thinking, oh, can I afford half a drone battery? I don't need to worry about that anymore, provided I've got reasonable sun every few days and that's pretty much it so i've been in places where it's been cloudy for three days and i've just had to stop filming with my drone completely and not had enough power to just transfer files from the sd card into a hard drive just before i finish up i'll show you what it looks like in the car just for a bit of scale it is hard to get an idea of scale for these things so that could quite easily just be strapped to the side there in the car. Um, it could quite easily go up to the top in the rooftop tent with me. So I'm gonna use this thing a fair bit over the next few months. I'll make another video once I've actually been using it and I'll give you my honest opinion. So this is my first ever review video. If you uh, like it, please let me know. If you don't, please let me know too, but you can always just scroll past it if you don't like it. I've, I've got a lot from looking at other people's review videos, so I kind of feel I should share the love and do a few of my own. And uh, it also helps me to pay for my trips if I can get free equipment because you know I'm completely self-funded in all the adventures that I do so uh, yeah hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching feel free to check out some of my other videos